Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Learning Python series. We're gonna be continuing on with strings, but this is gonna be the last part we cover on strings in this series. We're gonna talk about string interpolation, what it is, how to use it. You ever heard of an F string? That's string interpolation. And just a few more bits on strings that I think you guys will find useful. So string interpolation, the best way I can describe it is creating a string and then creating placeholders within that string, which we then switch the placeholders with a different kind of value. So let's just jump in and show you guys some examples. So we'll start with string interpolation and there's a few different ways to do it in Python. We have F strings, we have the uh, string dot format method and a few more old school ways of doing it which involves percent symbols and characters and yeah not great but you might still see it around so i'll throw a link to the docs where you can read a bit more on that in the description so let's start with f strings so i'm going to start out by creating a couple of variables here subject it's going to be python and adjective is going to be awesome and one more variable message equals looks like i'm about to write a string but to make this an f string we go ahead and add the f to uh just before the leading or opening quotation so that's what makes it an f string so let's carry on learning just writing a string like i normally would but now i want to add a placeholder and i do so by using the uh, set of curly braces. So that's the placeholder syntax for F strings. So learning something is something. So let's go ahead and fill in our placeholders. And we do so by just dropping in whatever values we want to uh, insert into our placeholders. It's very, very simple. So I want subject here and I want adjective here. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and save that and quickly talk about what we're doing. So the F at the beginning of the string tells Python that you need to treat this string differently. This is an F string and you're going to find placeholders in this string. And inside of those placeholders, you're going to find some kind of object which you then need to replace the value for. So Python will then look at this it will look at our placeholders, look at the objects that we've put inside of our placeholders. It's then gonna recompile that string and then transform it. So let's go ahead and print. Let's print message. And you can see we get learning Python is awesome. So Python scene, yep, this is an F string. Yep, there's a couple of placeholders in which have got, it's got something in between the placeholders. So, Python sees here, subject, the value for that is Python. So it's replaced the value here for Python and the exact same with adjective. The value is awesome. So it will substitute the placeholder value for the actual value itself. So F strings are quite simple, which is what I really like about them. And they're really readable. You know, you can see what's going where. And that will make more sense when we cover something like string format. So that's one way to format strings with F strings. Let's go ahead and do the same with a multi-line F string. So I'll create a new variable here called multi equals, and I want an F string, so I'll use the F. And just like we create a multi-line uh, string normally, we can do the same thing with an F string. So it's just an F prefixed in front of the opening quote. So let's put a few placeholders in here and let's create a couple of variables to fill these in with. So we'll do foo, bar and baz. We'll create these all in one line. Foo, bar and baz. And now of course we need to fill in the values for our placeholders. So let's have foo bar and baz down here. And let's go ahead and print our multi variable. 
and see how it looks. And as you'd expect, we get our multi-line string with the values that we've uh, put in our placeholders replaced with their real values. So foobar and baz become foobar and baz, but with the values that we've assigned to them. So f strings work across multi-line strings as well. But it's not just variables and strings that we can drop in here. We can do all sorts of cool stuff with f strings or just string interpolation in general. So let's do something like the following. Calc equals nine to the power of 10 is place smart, uh, placeholder. We need our f string and we can do some logic inside of our placeholders. So we can do nine to the power of 10. And let's go ahead and print calc and see how that looks. So we get nine to the power of 10 is three, four, eight, six, seven, eight, four, four, zero, one. So we can do logic, we can do math, we can do all sorts of cool stuff inside of these placeholders. Essentially, it's almost anything that you can do outside of a string, you can kind of do inside a string, kind of. There are some limits, but you know, for example, let's create a dictionary. And I know we haven't covered maths or dictionaries in Python yet, but we will get to that. So let's uh, just create a dictionary here with one key and one value. I'll use mine. And let's just uh, create a new F string here. And username is placeholder. And then let's say we want to access a, a value from dictionary using a key. So we can do user square brackets. And then we can pluck out the username value. And then we can go ahead and print message. And if we run that, we get username is Julian. So F strings. You can do more than just dropping in variable values. You can do math. You can do any kind of logic. You can, you know, do list comprehension, all sorts of crazy stuff inside of uh, an F string or string interpolated strings in general. So let's move on. So that's everything I want to cover in on F strings. So let's move on to the dot format method. Now, as you guys can see, this is a string method. So if you watched the last episode on string functions and methods, you'll know that here we're using the dot notation and then calling dot format. And then we can pass arguments in here. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to grab this exact string. I'm going to bring it down. And what we'll do, we'll just rather than have this as an F string, we will just replace it with a dot format string. So we'll call dot format if I can spell, oh goodness. And then what we do with dot format, we pass in arguments to the parentheses here in the order that we want them to be replaced. So for example here, we want subject to be in the first placeholder here. So we do subject and then we do the next one, which is adjective. So let's go and print message and let's just clear that out see how that looks we get the same result learning python is awesome but this is just a different way of doing things personally i prefer f strings but this is just to illustrate that this is a different way and you will see this used a lot in python there are some other things some other interesting things that we can do with um the dot format method I mean, one, we can do logic just like we can in an F string. So let's just do calc equals uh, placeholder is the result of 100 divided by four dot format. Why can't I spell format? What's wrong with me today? And then we can do some logic inside of the parentheses here. So we can do 100 divided by four and then let's print calc. Let's look at the result. 25.0 is the result of 100 divided by four. And the reason we get a decimal here 
or a float is because anytime you do um, division in Python, it always returns a floating point value. So that's why we get 25.0 rather than just 25. So what else can we do? So something that's a little bit different with the dot format method is we can rearrange where things appear in the placeholders. I think I'll show you with an example. So let's do one equals first, two equals second, and three equals third. And then we'll just create a new variable here called reordered, and that's just gonna contain three placeholders, and then we'll do dot, I've done it again, foam, what's wrong with me? Format, <laughs> dot format. So normally you would do one, two, three, and if we print the result, print reordered, let's see what we get. Just as expected, we get first, second, and third, because that's the order of which we pass these arguments into the dot format method. However, if we were to do something like zero, two, and one, and then if we print that again, you can see we get third, first, and second. So you can use numbers inside of your placeholders here, and um, the string will be formatted kind of based on the ordering of your numbers inside the placeholders, as opposed to the order that you actually pass them in as arguments into the dot .format method. So that's just something interesting to note. You may see that used. I've never really found a reason to use this, but I'm sure you may come across it in the future. So I think that's everything that I want to show you on string interpolation in Python. So of course we've got f strings, use the f prefix, and then placeholders, and inside your placeholders go your values that you want to substitute. And in the dot format, again, you create your placeholders, but you don't use the f prefix and then you pass in your arguments into the dot .format method. So finally, what are we gonna cover? Just some of the other string prefixes. So you've already seen one, so you've seen the F, but that can also be an uppercase F. So you may see something like this instead, and that'll work in the exact same way. So if we were to print, calc, run our code, you can see we get the same output, but this is a capital F, but typically it's lowercase, so I just recommend stick with lowercase. Now, B, what is a B string? What is an R string? <laughs> stick with me and I'll tell you. So a B string stands for bytes, or B stands for bytes, and strings in Python are not bytes. They are Unicode or UTF-8. So when we want a string of bytes or a byte string, you have to explicitly declare it. And in the last episode, we use the dot encode, which gave us a byte string, string of bytes. And we could do the same with the B prefix. So let's go ahead and do an example. Byte string equals B, followed by our set of quotes here. And there we go, we get bytes. And if we print our byte string, and clear this. Oh, we've still got our previous one, I'm gonna get rid of that. But you can see that we get this printed out with the little B symbol in front. And that's because it is bytes. And the same thing can be done with an uppercase B exactly the same. Now, R strings. R strings are very interesting. R strings are also known as raw strings. So let's go ahead and create one. This is so raw, dude. Let's go and create a raw string. And we do that again with the R prefix. Or you can use the uppercase, but typically you will see it with a lowercase r. So what happens if we print raw? Let's get rid of this. 
it's clear. Let's print raw. And we see here, we just get our normal string. In fact, sorry guys, I've skipped forward one bit. I just want to show you something back here on byte string. If we print the type, so if we go ahead and print type byte string, let's just comment out print raw for now. You can see it is of a certain data type and that data type is bytes. So just something there to be aware of that strings and bytes are different in Python and they're handled differently. So just something for you guys to be aware of. In most cases, you're absolutely fine just working with normal strings, but there are things where uh, certain functions or certain libraries or certain things in Python only work with bytes. And when you come across that, now you know you can use the B prefix. So back to raw strings. So we just printed that and it just told us it was a string, right? Or it just looks like a normal string. So what happens if we also print the type on a raw string? Okay, so it's just a string. Raw strings are typically used when you need a string that contains some of the escape characters that we covered in the last episode. So let's go ahead and, you know, let's add a backslash n for new line, maybe let's add a backslash b for backspace, a backslash a for a bell, and a backslash t for a tab. So if we didn't have, let's take away the, um, let's take away the r. Let's take away the type because we know it's a string and let's print this out and see how it looks. You can see here we've, you know, we've got a new line in our string, we've got backspace, it's, you know, gone over a letter and we've also got a tab in here with, which is the uh, backslash T. However, if we want a raw string, we add the R. Let me, uh, in fact, we'll print it here so we can see the difference. And you can see here we get the raw output. So it hasn't listened to any of those escapes that we've got in our string. It's just kind of compiled them all as part of the string. So you will see raw strings used in something called regular expressions, which we're not gonna cover in this video, um, but regular expressions are a way of pattern matching in Python. Every language has a regular expression engine or syntax and typically to create a pattern you use a raw string and we're not going to cover that in this tutorial but you will see raw strings used in regular expressions so that covers it for this one and that wraps things up for strings in python um, i hope you found it useful if you've got any comments or questions then do drop them below i do have a text-based version of this tutorial which i'll throw a link in the description too so thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to drop a like or subscribe. And as always, thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.